Hello everyone. Welcome to Telugu One Academy. Friends, when I was teaching you the topic of Northeast Insurgency and each other topics related to internal security, you might have listened me telling about the word called NRC or National Registry of Citizens. So my friends, what exactly is this NRC? What are the complications that India might face? Okay, when come to NRC, my friends, NRC will be linked with the topic called Citizenship Amendment Act, okay, CAA, okay. With this, you will also learn about National People Registry, NPR. But for the purpose of internal security, I would like to restrict myself for the topic of NRC and rest of the topics of uh, Citizenship Amendment Act and NPR you will be learning in your polity which is related to citizenship. So apart from this, as it is related to internal security, I will also give you a bit of introduction about Citizenship Amendment Act and also National Population Registry. So coming to NRC, NRC was first conducted in the year 1951 all over India, but it was never revised again. It was only revised for the purpose of Assam. So what exactly happened in Assam also I will be discussing with you. So what is National Registry of Citizens? Accordingly, National Registry of Citizens 1951 is a register prepared after the conduct of census of 1951 when the census was first time conducted we also noted down the names of all the citizens of India in respect to each village showing the houses or holdings in serial order and indicating against each house or holding the number and names of persons staying in that house we have given some house numbers and we have also noted down the names of people who were living in those houses for the first time in 1951. The NRC was published only once in the year 1951. Though we conclude, we uh, time to time have said we need to revise this NRC, but this was not happened in pan India level. So, okay, NRC in Assam. The issue of its update assumed importance as Assam witnessed large scale illegal immigrants coming from Bangladesh during the creation of East Pakistan and also after the Bangladesh Liberation War of 1971. Then what happened because of this change in demography, especially the students who are located in the Assam, all the people what they did they formed Assam, All India Assam Student Union now started a protest for a revised NRC for a revised NRC and the deportation of all the illegal migrants who have entered the Assam okay so now what happened the movement culminated into signing an accord called Assam Accord in 1985 according to this accord what was promised then done was that we will revise the NRC and we have put a date that before okay that before whoever person comes after March 25th 1971 from Bangladesh or any other area he will be considered illegal migrant unless or until he shows a proof of identity that that person lives or his ancestors lived in Assam. So this was the date that is only the people who were in Assam period to this will be included either in the voter list of Assam or as a citizens of India. Whoever comes later then they will be not be supported. So what happened accordingly since the cutoff date prescribed under the article 5 and 6 of the constitution for citizenship okay because under the constitution in article 3 and article 5 and 6 we have citizenship amendments and that has been revised time to time so the cutoff date was 1949 but for the purpose of changing the cutoff date we have amended the citizenship act 1955 a new cutoff date was introduced this was only applicable to assam so revision of national registry of citizens was also requested by the states of tripura tripura and manipur 
Manipur because these two were the then princely states and it was also accepted by the government of India but at the ground level the NRC was never implemented in these two states. So after the first draft of NRC which was released in the year 2019 under the guidance and supervision of the Supreme Court of India where in 2014 it has said that is our Supreme Court has said that NRC should be speeded up and it should be given a exact time frame. Okay. Here it said, December 2014, a division bench of the Supreme Court order NRC is to be updated in a time bound manner. The NRC of 1951 and electoral rolls of 1971 up to the midnight of 24th March 1971 are together called the legacy data. Persons and their descendants whose names appeared in these documents are certified as citizens. Whoever are not able to show any of such documents or proofs of belonging to these persons who are in the electoral roles and citizenship of India, then they will not be given citizenship and they will be concluded as illegal migrants and they will be sent to the foreigner tribunals and the foreigner tribunals after declaring them as a illegal migrants they will be deported accordingly so let's see what are the challenges also again see national register of citizens is an exercise by indian government to recognize and expel the illegal migrants pursuant to the section 14a of citizenship act 1955 read along with the foreigners act 1946 as i said you my friends any person whose name is not found in the NRC register, he will be grabbed and he will be put into the detention center and from there he has to go and appeal in the foreigners tribunal under foreigners act. Okay, in that tribunal, the burden of proof, the burden of proof in the sense that I am a citizen of India to prove myself that I am a citizen of India that burden of bringing a proof either my father's certificate either an LIC policy or my parents or any of the forefathers uh, electoral role that burden of proof exists with me and no one will be ready to help you okay the government implemented the NRC in the northeastern state of Assam bordering Bangladesh but what happened as you know Bangladesh and India are ethnically connected and historically also connected for long time in the history. The recent publish by UN World Migration Report 2020 has identified this as one of the most vulnerable migrant corridors in Asia given the historical fluidity between the boundaries. So, okay, in Assam, international borders are young and divided ethnically. Similar societies owing the long history of territory exchange agreements between India and Bangladesh and legal migration of refugees in the aftermath of Indo-Pakistan War of 1971. Therefore, the porosity established migrant categories must be acknowledged and preserved by the state. So, what happened my friends? So, these are migrant people. Now, these people will become stateless when you will make them as illegal immigrants. Because most of these people, if they are of young age like 24, 25 or in their early 30s, they cannot be, they cannot be sent back even to Bangladesh. Because when the first draft of NRC was created or published, it contained around 40 lakh people. And later when it was revised in the year 2019, it contained over 20 lakh people, 2 million people, which is approximately 3 to 4 percent of population of Assam. Population of Assam. So how can you say that this person belongs to Bangladesh or this person is from Myanmar then came to Bangladesh and then came to India. That is hard to detect from where this person has come. And even deporting such a large number that is 20 million is not an easy task and a herculean task. Because my friends if you try to send this 20 lakh people into Bangladesh Imagine what will our international relations will be with the Bangladesh in the later future. 
Because you see, China has already made inroads into Bangladesh through its Belt and Road Initiative. It has developed the Chittagong port. Okay. It has even, Bangladesh have even said that we are with China in developing the Belt and Road Initiative. And they are also a part of String of Pearls Initiative. String of Pearls Initiative. In Coastal Security, we will also learn about the String of Pearls, my friend. Okay. Apart from that, here in NRC, as I told you, it took a lot of money to revise this. And we have built a lot of detention centers. But what about the children of these people who have been detained, who have been living here since last 20, 30 years? Okay, we'll also learn about them. In 2019, government revised and released the final list of NRC, excluding nearly 2 million people, approximately 6% of the population effectively rendering them stateless. You see, I have given approximately 3 to 4, but it is 6% of the population of Assam who have become stateless because of this NRC. So, according to Section 2 of Foreigners Act, the foreigner is nothing but a person who is not a citizen of India. We will be declaring them as foreigners, not as illegal migrant, as directly as possible. The status of illegal migrant will be given by the foreigners tribunal. As I already said you, it is to the person, the burden of proof lies with the person suspected to be a foreigner to provide documentary evidence proving his citizenship. Those excluded must appeal with the foreigners tribunals established under this act, that is foreigners act, implying that state already treats them as non-citizens. So what happened, any person going to foreign tribunal, he is concluded that he is not our state. He is not person belonging to my state or my nation. Foreigners are required to prove their citizenship by providing legal legacy documents. Legacy documents are nothing but as I told you previously that either he should be, his ancestor should be in the NRC of 1951, any of its pa his parents or in the electoral rolls of 1971 okay or he has his family has been residing in a place or any other document which is related to the period to the cutoff date that is 1972 24 march midnight okay before this cutoff date 1972 this is 24 march 1972 so, in the absence of domestic legislation, you see, we do not have a domestic legislation to deal with uh, such an influx of uh, foreigners or sometimes you can call illegal migrants. Legal status of refugees, India's internal refugee management system is fraught with serious issues because we haven't signed important refugee treaties uh, under the United Nation. Principally because the essential conventions such as Convention relating to the status of stateless person, we haven't signed. In 1954, it was there. And the Convention on Reduction of Statelessness, Convention on Reduction of Statelessness, 1961, have not been used as a reference point for the methodolog methodological detection of people who are listed in NRC, reduction and prevention of statelessness as made evident by inhuman fallout of NRC. Friends, here what I am trying to explain you is, okay, NRC is good for the purpose of excluding the Bangladeshis, you might call, or non-state people from Assam to maintain the demography of Assam so that there is no insurgency in Assam. We are happy till that time. But we have just released the draft and we haven't moved ahead with the draft and we do not have any plan of doing what to do with these 20 mil, 2 million people or 20 lakh people. So what we are going to do with these people? No idea. So this is very important. So what to do with these people? What does international convention says? This topic will be very, very important when you want to discuss about this topic at your interview board or you want to write a good essay with related to internal security. Because you see, when these people are declared illegal and sent to deport uh, or have been sent to detention camps, these people can 
indulge into illegal activities very easily because of the poverty and harsh, uh, harsh conditions which, we, which they play or which they face at those detention centers. Isn't it? For example, you see a person is in detention center, some persons or some gang may form and these people might escape and they might uh, even conduct uh, some illegal crimes in various parts of India. Even that is the case with uh, why India doesn't take uh, the Rohingyas because they are poor and vulnerable and they can easily be misused just for petty money and uh, saying that we will provide them citizenship. Okay. Therefore, India suffers from a precinious pernicious commitment deficit to the international law. So, India did not sign these two and we are not uh, following these two conventions in solving the NRC issue. Then what happened? The issue will persist again and again, which is nothing but a burden for India itself. Okay, whenever you take any issue, my friends, you need to consider its past and you need to consider its present, how to speed up and you also need to consider its future. That is what next will be your thing. So here we are discussing what next, what is the present status. The per perpetuations of statelessness. So now the people are becoming statelessness. What are the issues now we, that those people are going to face? According to United Nations Human Rights, okay, uh, Human Rights Guidelines or United Nations Declaration on Human Rights, guidelines state that children are often stateless if their parents are stateless. Such per perpetuation can be curbed if the country in which the child is born grants its citizenship to the child even if the parents may be stateless. What happens? If parents are stateless, then the children who are born to them are also stateless. But you see, as in the USA, if any person will la take birth on the land of USA, then he will be declared a citizen. But in India, according to the Citizenship Act 1955, there is not, no provision saying that a person who has been born in India will be declared a citizen of India. And even in that act, it has been clearly mentioned, either of his parents should be a citizen of India, that is either father or mother or both of them or any other conditions. But person who has directly born on the land of India will not be given any citizenship that is called Jus soy, Soli. Okay. As I said you under section 3 oblique 1 of C, Citizenship Act 1955, denies this sort of citizenship, making the children born to these stateless people further stateless. Given this exclusionary pattern of NRC, this pre prerequisite has the potential to create statelessness in Assam by mere operation of a small law. Children, children are the most vulnerable to this exclusion since the denial of nationality from the birth subject them to cycle of extreme poverty without basic human rights. United Nations, according to UDHR, that is human rights, set common standard to achievement of all people of all nations, whereas in Article 15 creates a negative duty on the state not to create a statelessness. So, according to UDHR Article 15, this is not con in the Constitution of India, my friends. According to UDHR Article number 15, that says that children should be given citizenship rather creating a statelessness. And according to International Convention on Civil and Political Rights, Article 24, states categorically that every child has a right to acquire a nationality. What my friends? Remember, ICCPR is nothing but International Convention. Okay, this is I is nothing but International. International Convention for Civil and Political Rights. Okay. So, they need to, uh, it says that every child should have certain nationality to him. This also supplemented, see this nationality thing is also supplemented by convention which is related with the rights of children, convention for the rights of children article 8 that obliges that state parties to accord right to every children 
to acquire nationality in his or her birth country of birth. So moreover, the determination of citizenship through lineage is inherently exclusionary in the country. In a country like India, you see a country like India, if you want to give citizenship based on your ancestry, then you imagine my friends, according to UNICEF, about 40% of urban births in India and 65% of rural births under are unregistered despite obligatory under Article 7 of uh, CRC that is uh, Convention on Rights of Children to register all births. Even with such an international convention, India was not able to register their births as for a long period. It is not only the issue of uh, people of uh, Assam or the people who are living, from, living in Assam. It is a pan-India issue, my friends. There was a time that NRC, it was said, NRC will be again implemented across India. Then you see, all our ancestors, most of our grandfathers, grandmothers did not have any document for their birth registry. And most of our ancestors haven't taken the voter ID. Okay, if such a date has been pushed on to mainland of India also, it will create a chaos. So that's why I'm saying, beyond subjecting children to a cycle of statelessness, the NRC has also deprived them from essential parent care. Because you see, when the parents are sent to detention camps, the children are separated from the parents and sent to a different space place. Children have been forcefully separated from the parents who are held in the detention center and according to this act there is no prescribed period that to how much of time the people or parents will be detained. There is no statutory limitation on the period of detention. Section 3 of foreign act and most of these centers are derelict conditions and provide no opportunity for children to establish any personal contact with parents uh, mandated under the Article 9. Although the law provides for non-custodial alternatives, the government of Assam in a white paper expressed its predilection towards the use of detention as a preferred means. This has resulted in the dehumanization of millions excluded from the NRC. This is very, very important, my friends. So now what will be your solution? What will be your solution? So according to a political thinker called Hannah Ardent, what she said was, the plight of refugees be being transformed from homeless to stateless and ultimately to rightlessness. What Hannah Ardent said that, a refugee will start from a place that he will not have any home and next he will not have any state or nationality for him and at last he will have no rights. Isn't it? So this is what happening even with the people who have been excluded in the NRC. Not just the common people. In the news we have even seen ex-army personnel have also been excluded from the list of NRC and it has become a burden for most of the people to show their proof of identity. So this rings the particularly true in the context of NRC, though which all Assam residents have been deemed illegal citizens and burdened with the obligation to prove their nationality beyond reasonable doubt. Persecution of genuine Indian citizens who suffer the trauma of exclusion is direct breach of rule of law, which I could say. If states remain unwilling to honor their international commitments, the judiciary must display the exemplary constitutional courage in reviving India's civilizational heritage of inclusiveness and uphold the country's obligation to foster respect for international law under Article 51C of the Constitution. So what happened? We are calling that now it is the time for judiciary again to step in and to rethink uh, that uh, we need to do exemplary steps uh, so that the children and the people are not dehumanized uh, and they have also rights uh, to protect themselves uh, based on the international conventions which we respect through the constitution of India under article 15 oblique C. This was 
a good recommendation which I would show like to give you and which the article which have been uh, taken from the internet also likes to provide you. So my friends, here I would like to end my class. So I hope you understood what exactly is NRC, what are the problems faced by NRC. Remember, in your interview, you should go with the data, ample amount of data. Okay, do not go with the questions which you, which you lack of data, okay. Try to answer more of your answers with data. Say that, yeah, according to, uh, according to UNICEF, that around 65% of the births in rural areas have not been registered, then it will be a burden to prove that, uh, prove that they belong to India. Okay, these all things you have to take care, okay. Hope you understood my class. So I'll, I would like to stop the class here. So the solution for NRC, as I told you, lies with the people, lies with the government when it doesn't do and it happens with the judiciary itself and by PIL petitions as it described in the polity, you can do these good works also. So as I told you before leaving the class, there are also something I need to explain you that is called Citizenship Amendment Act which was recently introduced in parliament in the year 2019 and have also been passed by the Parliament of India, which gives citizenship rights to the persecuted communities in the neighboring countries of India, which include, which excludes, I can say you, the countries which are excluded from the uh, Citizenship Amendment Act were Pakistan and Sri Lanka, even the persecuted Hindus from Bangladesh were included, okay. So this is one of the major point and Jews are not there in that list of persecuted communities. Hindus, Sikhs, Jains, Buddhists are included in that. Even Muslims are not included because most of the countries, if we include Muslims then with Myanmar we have Rohingyas, they might come in. So that's the basic issue we have faced. And even something I have also started with that is uh, National Population Registry, NPR. NPR has nothing to do with the uh, nothing to do with the National Citizenship Registry, NCR. NPR is nothing but which contains uh, data regarding the people who are living at their present location. For example, I have been living in my this hometown for last six months, only that data. That is where this person have been living from last six months and is he expected to live in the same place for the next six months. It is only regarding the data where person is uh, staying and it has nothing to do with your citizenship but there are more perception in the people that this NPR data could have could be misused to deport major people many number of people from India so especially within the Muslim community it has been challenged and most of the people have felt that they will be deported unwillingly because most of them lack the documents as it is needed in the purpose of National Citizenship Registry. So my friends, I hope you understood my class. I would like to end my class here. Thank you for watching our video. This is Nikhil from Telugu One Academy. Thank you.